In this demo, we'll explore integration features between TAP and Tanzu Service Mesh, or TSM. We'll start by walking through the process of building a multi-workload application on a TAP build cluster via supply chain. Then we'll use a GitOps workflow to deploy the application across multiple run clusters that have been integrated with TSM. Next, we'll build out our global namespace, which includes a newly or newly deployed application. And lastly, we'll take a look at the application topology inside the global namespace within the TSM console. We're going to use an application called Acme Fitness Store, which is an e-commerce polyglot multi-service application. We'll start with the TAP workload construct here, which includes directives and other configuration information that will be used by the supply chain to create an OCI compliant image as well as deployment configuration files. I'll submit the workload resources to my supply chain in the build cluster, which will first create an application image and then create a pull request with resulting delivery configuration files into my GitOps repository. In the TAP GUI, we can see all the workloads that I have submitted to the supply chain. We'll go ahead and select one of these and we'll take a look at the supply chain details. First, the source code is pulled from the source repository into the build cluster by the Flux uh, source controller and stored as a source image in a source registry. Next, the source image is submitted to the Tanzu build service, which will ultimately build the application image. Using an external log tailing tool, we can actually watch the build service running through the steps of building the image. Once the image is finally built, additional conventions are applied to create delivery configuration files. Once these files are generated, they are submitted as a pull request into our GitOps repository. The supply chain viewer will allow us to click a button and navigate to the pull request where it can be reviewed, approved, and finally merged. At that point, the workload's latest image and configuration are ready to be applied to the run cluster. For deployment, I have two branches created in my GitOps repo for two run clusters named East1 and East2 that define what workloads will be deployed to which cluster. I've also created a KApp application for each cluster that points to its respective branch in the GitOps repository. Once the KApp applications are installed, Acme Fitness Store's workloads will be deployed to their appropriate run clusters. Once the deployment is complete, we'll see the Acme website up and running in our run clusters. Now we're going to create a global namespace. I'll select New Global Namespace and start giving it the name Acme Fitness and an internal domain name of Acme Fitness Lab. Next, I'll select the Kubernetes clusters and namespaces that will make up my global namespace. First, I'll select the East1 cluster and the Acme namespace, and then I'll also add the East2 cluster again with the Acme namespace. These clusters and namespace will host all the workloads in my application. Next, I'll indicate I want to monitor some sensitive data, and then I'm going to indicate that I want my application to be publicly available. I'll select the service that I want to be the entry point, which will be my API gateway, and then I'll build out the rest of the public URL. Next, I'll click Next through the remaining options, and then I'll wait for the global namespace to be created. Once the namespace has been created, I'll begin to explore the topology of the services in my application. Note the service calls are distributed across multiple clusters and the calling services have no idea that the target services exist in separate clusters. Now let's get a better view of what our application looks like inside the global namespace. We can see the topology of all the application's workloads, which also includes a connection to a Redis instance. One of the more interesting parts of this deployment is the cross-cluster workload deployment. If you look down at the bottom of the diagram, you can see the internal service-to-service -service calls going across cluster boundaries. The calling services have no idea that the target services do not exist within their own cluster, and they reference the target services only using the service name. The Tanzu service mesh sidecars handle the details of discovery, routing, and if configured, security between the services in the different clusters. This concludes our demo and illustrates some of what is possible with TAP and TSM integration.